this is my wife's Q5, uh, and we today are going to be putting a remote start in it, utilizing this Fortin Evo Oud T1 kit. It comes with a T harness and is plug and play with the exception of three wires, the can high and low, as well as the brake switch. Um, so I'm going to show you the install procedure. Um, basically, like... You would need to, in order to install yourself, you need to have a FlashLink updater that Fortin sells, and you download their software. You need to have a Windows PC, and you can put the latest firmware, program it exactly how you want, whether it want it to be a remote start, uh, remote start with alarm, and there's like a ton of different options that you can select, uh, but you need to have the other piece as well. First things first, whenever you're doing dealing with anything electrical, disconnect your battery. On these B8 Q5s, which is from like 2009 to 2016, uh, batteries in the trunk. Just pull the terminals off the battery. First thing you want to do in the interior is grab an interior trim tool puller, and we need to remove this trim piece where the key port is so that we can get to the wiring behind it. Uh, so in order to do so, you want to just stick your trim tool on this end, pry it out like so, and then grab it on that side right there, right there, and this should be ready to come out have to give it a little bit of a pull this wire is wrapped routed um, in that little groove right there and then down on this little side notch as well so you just got to undo uh, get it out from underneath all that and then you can just rest it down here on your shifter next you need to remove this top bolt right here that holds the key port in place And then this should be ready to come out and then you can just push it back in the dash. You want to remove this trim piece for the key port as well and then this whole thing as you can see will fall back in the dash because we're going to need to get to that and disconnect the electrical connector from behind. Now we have to remove the knee panel. Um, which is this piece under here because we have to get to the brake switch wire as well as the can wires um, In order to do that first we're going to start by popping off this fuse cover you take your interior trim piece and just pry from behind that and Pull that out and now you'll see that there are a series of bolts the, to remove this panel uh, one of which is here one of which is here one of which is here, and I believe there's one behind uh, here as well, and possibly one on this side also. So we'll now remove this trim piece that's above the steering wheels just so we could access those other bolts. To remove this piece, again, take your interior trim tool, put it behind here, and pull. And you may have to do that on both sides. And as you can see, after removal of that trim piece, it's not completely removed, but there it is. That's another bolt for uh, that driver knee panel. These are eight millimeter bolts. Just for speed, I'm going to use my impact driver. Don't lose any of these, obviously. And I'm gonna have to get a ratchet to get to the ones that are, I just pointed out, that are behind the column. Hold on. Once you remove, uh, there's four screws total. There's one right here. One right here. 
one down in this corner and one down in the bottom right corner. There are none over here. The one that I saw here is not, I think that holds the cluster in place. It doesn't hold the kick panel in place. One, and then once you get those bolts out, they're all eight millimeter bolts. Uh, you could just grab it and pull it. The clips will pop. And then you have a couple of electrical connectors that are down here and connected to this kick panel. First off is the headlight switch. You have the light and you have the OBD2 port down there. So like the footwell light, you'll see two down there. And then this right, right here is the wire going to the headlight switch. So just gently grab those, disconnect them, and then remove this kick panel out of your way. So once you have those wires disconnected, as I mentioned, you pull the kick panel out of the way. I just put it up on the roof to get it out of the way. Now what you need to do is you need to get to the electrical connector on the back of the key port. It's get yourself a light and set it up going in this direction. You need to look up this way and uh, that, there is the key port and where the electrical connector goes into it. It's a tight spot. It's got a little brown uh, thing that holds it into place, but it slides in right up there. If you need to like, take your fingers from the top, push it back to hold it in place, and finagle it out uh, that way. Um, but basically, I already disconnected it, so you can see this is... The wire so this little brown clip you need to pull it out and then once that's pulled out you'll be able to depress the tab and then separate the wires so now at this point you're going to grab the t-harness that came in your kit okay and you're going to find the t-section of it which is so there's your wiring harness the t-section is this right here so you're gonna plug that portion that we just pulled out, that's right hanging here, into this female end, because that's a male, and then this male end is what's gonna go back and plug back into the key port. So this video is a long time coming. I finished installing the Fortin remote start uh, a few months ago now. I just, I started off recording the install process because the only video I could find on the internet was in, um, I believe, Japanese. Um, but I got so frustrated when I went to go get the electrical connector for the key port back in place that I stopped, rep stopped recording after that. And the reason that I had such a difficult time is if you look at this, you can kind of see that the key port sits on an angle. And with the trim piece, with this trim piece off, I didn't realize that. So I kept trying to position the entire thing back in place vertical. And I could not get, there's like little plastic grooves on each side of the key port, like on the left and the right side. And I couldn't get them to line up. And it was all because of the way that I was angling and positioning the key port to get it back in place. And it took quite a while, I got very frustrated. It's very tight getting to it from reaching from back under here once these when these things are apart. Um, but after that I stopped recording and I kind of regret that because I wanted to put a video together so people could see how, how easy it is. So now that it's back together, I kind of want to just like run through what I did. When you buy the Fortin Remote Start, it comes with a link so that you could download the wire diagram. When you look at the wire diagram, it's a little overwhelming because it has a ton of wires um, on the diagram that seem to not really go anywhere. On the harness itself, there's a ton of wires that are unused. Um, but basically, I've had this thing now connected, hooked up, running for a couple of months. Um, and after you get the key port connector on and the key port back in place, there's literally only three wires that you need to connect. All over the box for you know safety purposes, it says that the hood pin connection is mandatory, but it's really not because this vehicle, these Q5s, they have the factory, um, not a hood pin, but it's built into the latch. So you don't even have to worry about that. Basically, all you have to do is hook up uh, the brake connection wire, can high and can low. Um, on the harness that you get, the brake switch is yellow and blue. It gets connected to a red and black wire on the car, which you can get to right here. Um, when you have this knee panel off right up 
above the brake pedal is the connection. You could see when you, if you look at it, when you kick this, you'll see it hit a little pin. That's the brake switch. You pull that plug out and the red and black wire on there is where the yellow and blue striped wire on the harness gets connected to. Um, and then the only other two wires you have to connect are the can high and can low. In the instructions that Fortin provides, they say to get to the can high and can low in the steering column. Quite honestly, I found that to be a little bit of a pain just because of where it is. And for me, the way that I connected these wires was I utilized, I, I just soldered everything. I know a lot of people would think that may be overkill, especially in the inside of the car. Just use buck connectors, make life easy, but I just like to solder. Um, and use like the waterproof buck, uh, heat shrink just to make sure everything stays in place. So what I did was instead of fighting with going under the column and trying to solder at this height, because also my soldering station like needs to sit on the floor and that would have been a pain, I the can high and can low can be accessed right behind this kick panel here. You basically just stick a screwdriver for the to get to the clip that holds this hood release in place. And that was done, I'll show you how I did that. And then once that's done, so you go right in here and pry that out, and that is your clip that holds this thing in place. So then you can pull this out, and then once you pull that out, you can just pr pull up on this entire plastic trim, and there's a bunch of electrical connectors in here. Or actually, there's one screw, sorry. There's one screw right here you have to remove. But once you remove that screw, this whole piece will come right out. And then that's where you get your can high and can, get easier access to your can high and can low. And you can find them simply because they're just, you're going to see um, basically a orange and green and orange and brown wire that are twisted together on the harness, the gray wire is can high and that gets connected to the orange and green on the car and on the harness you'll see a gray and black and that gets connected to the orange and brown wire on the harness just make sure you keep those wires twisted and tucked together um, and then that's it then you, you put everything back together and uh, your remote start works so here's my factory key Wait a minute. Let me close the door. I have it set so that you do it twice, and then it starts. And there you go. If I want to shut it, I can... One. Hit it three more times and it'll shut off. But that's it. It's that simple. I gotta unlock the car to get back in. If anyone does not have a soldering station or soldering iron and is interested in getting one that I personally feel is great and definitely great for the money, this is what I have. It's the Xtronic 3060 Pro. It's basically a digital soldering station. It has this little nice, this nice little light on it with a magnifying glass. So if you're over here and you're trying to solder two small wires it also has these alligator clips that you could put under the magnifying glass with the lights and be fairly precise but what i like is that it has i'm sure you, i don't know if you can see this but you could set your temperature 380 was worked out very well for this particular project and that gauge of wiring um but you have three channels of presets that you can store as far as temperature so if you have like three gauges of wires that you're typically working with you could just set your presets once you figure out what your temperature is that you like obviously your iron can sit up here kind of sponge a little area to dab your thing a little roller to hold your solder um extra tips obviously uh and then this is the heat shrink marine grade heat shrink that i use with the uh, you know, the adhesive line, the inner wall, just to keep everything tight and together. Um, these are my favorite wire strippers. I'll put them a link to them in case anyone needs that because this does require wire strippers. This is an automatic one. I think that this one, if I remember correctly, for this particular project, this might have been too small of gauge wire for this to work. But as far as a manual stripper, I really like 
you know, this standard vice grip one. And this was the wiring diagram that I was talking about and all the wiring that you'll see. So you see there's this electrical connector and in the harness itself, you know, you see this thing, you got to put this janky hood pin. I'm like, I'm not wiring this janky hood pin into into my car and then you have all of these wires that are coming out but everything basically that's grayed out is unused it's in the harness but unused and then everything else is already going somewhere so the only three wires like i mentioned before that you need to worry about are these three the brake activation wire the can high and the can low and these are the wire colors in the harness these are the wire colors on the car but that's it so this is the Fortin Flashlink updater uh, that I mentioned earlier. You get the updater itself, cable to hook it up to a USB port on a PC. Uh, you have to have a Windows PC. I do not have a Windows PC. So what I did is I put Boot Camp on my Mac and I'm running Windows on my Mac. So if you can figure that out, then you can um, run this on a Mac and not have to go out and buy a PC if you don't have one. So once you are running Windows, all you have to do is install the Flashlink Manager that you can get from their website. Um, and then once you have that installed, you open it up. After install and you want to mess with the settings on the module, basically you take the module back out of the car, connect the updater to your PC, and connect your module on this end of the updater via the cable that they provide you. Uh, I'm not going to remove the module from the car, so unfortunately I can't show you all of the options and how easy it is to update it, but it is very simple, it's very self-explanatory, and this kind of walks you through the entire process. So like you have to go and you have the process of like programming the key to the module. Um, it's a, there's a couple of times in and out of the car that you have to do that from the computer to the car, which it's not that bad. It really isn't. Just don't put all your interior trim back together until you have the module programmed. Or what you could do is, which what I didn't do because I don't have any intention in going back out there and updating it, um, is you could just put it somewhere and Velcro it maybe to the back of that knee panel so that way you could get to it easily, but I tucked it up pretty high, so I'd have to pull the interior apart to get to it. But that's it. If you have any questions, like drop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can. I just figured it'd be helpful if this video was in English for anyone that found the Japanese video but got frustrated and then looked at the wiring diagram and got overwhelmed. It's really not difficult. I'd say that anyone can really do it, um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will put the links to everything in the description. And uh, I hope this helps. Huh. Car no starty. You gotta be kidding me. It works! Ready? You can shut it off with three things too. Okay. So, one, two, three. Interesting. How fucking cool is this?